Adventurous kids explore with education and learning what a wildlife is in the Everglades. I want to explore the museum of discovering science. What plants do butterflies like? I want to know about Key West. Adventurous kids learning and fun. Adventurous kids! Today we're going to tell you about monotremes. Monotremes are one of the three main groups of living mammals. There are only five living monotreme species, the duckbill platypus and four species of the echidnia, also known as the spiny anteater, which are short beaked echidnia, western long beaked echidnia, Sir David's long beak echidnia, and eastern long beak echidnia. All of them are found in only Australia, New Guinea, and nearby islands. Monotremes are not a very diverse group today. The word monotrem means single opening in Greek, referring to the single dark, dark colica. For the binary and the fecatory, reproductive systems, and later eggs all are out of that same hole. Monotremes like reptiles have a single clica. Monotremes lack teeth as adults. Monotremes are the only mammals that lay eggs, rather than bear with young. But like all mammals, the female monotremes nurse their young with milk. Monotrem milk contains a highly expressed antibacterial protein not found in other mammals, perhaps to compensate for the more septic manner of milk intake associated with the absence of mammary and glands. Monotrem's metabolic rate as remarkably low by mammalian standards. The platypus has an average body temperature of about 88 degrees Fahrenheit and the echidna has a low body temperature between 86 and 90 degrees Fahrenheit rather than the averages of 95 degrees Fahrenheit for marsupials and 99 degrees Fahrenheit for poisonous mammals. Monotremes have retained and modified these and other reptilian traits from the Jurassic period to 100 million to 145 million years ago, which is when they diverged evolutionarily from all other mammals. The fossil of monotremes is relatively sparse. The first Mesozoic monotrem to be discovered was Therapodin Galamai from Lightning Ridge, New South Wales. The other known Mesozoic monotrem is Tyna Elonophis, both from Australian deposits in the Cretaceous period. So monotremes had already diversified by that time. A platypus tooth has been found in the Paleocene of Argentina. So one hypothesis is that monotremes arose in Australia in the late Jurassic or early Cretaceous and that some migrated across Antarctica to South America, both of which were still united with Australia at that time. However, several genetic studies suggest an origin of the Triassic. The duck billed platypus is a semi aquatic egg laying mammal endemic to eastern Australia, including Tasmania. Platypus yeah. to live more than 12 years in the wild. In captivity, Platypuses have survived 17 years of age, and wild specimens have been recaptured when 11 years old. The average length of a male duck-billed platypus is 20 inches 
the smaller females average 17 inches in length. They weigh 1.5 to 5.3 pounds. Their natural predators include snakes, water rats, hawks, owls, eagles, and sometimes crocodiles. They live in long holes that they dig on the banks of rivers and streams. The platypus is an excellent swimmer, diving underwater on average for around 30 seconds to forage for food before coming up for air. Platypus close their eyes and ears when underwater, so in order to feed on worms, insects, and freshwater shrimp, they use their sense of electroreception and dig up muddy riverbeds with their bill to detect the electric fields of prey. The platypus has 40,000 electroreceptors on its bill. Monotrem electrolocation probably evolved in order to allow the animals to afford in murky waters and may be tied to the tooth loss. The platypus uses pouches in its cheeks to carry prey back to the surface where it is eaten. The platypus eats about 20% of its own weight and food each day which requires it to spend an average of 12 hours daily looking for food. <laughs> studies, it has been suggested that the eyes of the platypus are more similar to those of Pacific hagfish or Northern Hemisphere lampreys than to those of most hydropods. The eyes also contain double cones, which most mammals do not have. Both male and female platypuses are born with ankle spurs. However, the back foot ankle spur of a male platypus contains a venom that shoots out and is powerful enough to kill small animals such as dogs. The venom is not lethal to humans, but it can cause severe pain that sometimes last for weeks. The platypus sleeps on average up to 14 hours per day. The platypus is usually nocturnal, coming out at night or twilight to feed. Sometimes they are also active on overcast days. It lays one to three, usually two, small livery eggs, similar to those of reptiles. 0.43 inches in diameter and slightly rounder than her age. After laying her eggs, the female curls around them. She incubates her eggs for about for 10 days or so before they hatch. The newly hatched young are both blind and hairless and are fed by the mother's milk. Although Possessing mammary bands, the platypus lacks teeth instead of milk. This release through pore and the skin. The milk falls in grooves on her abdomen, allowing the young to lap it up. After about five weeks, the mother begins to spend more time away from her young. And at around four months, the young emerge from the girl aquatic form of teeth. But these drop out at a very early age, leaving the horny place it uses to grind food. The platypus has been used as a mascot for national events in Australia and is featured on the Australian 20 cent coin. The duckbill platypus is the state animal of New South Wales until the early 20th century humans hunted the platypus for its fur, but it is now protected throughout its range. Although captive breeding programs have had only limited success, and the platypus is vulnerable to the effects of pollution, it is not under any immediate threat. Didn't the spiny anteater is a monotrum that lives in Australia and New Guinea. 
the average lifespan of an echidna in the wild is around 16 years. When fully grown, a female can weigh up to 9.9 pounds. Wow! And a male can weigh up to 13.2 pounds. Wow! Males are 25% larger than females on average. Kidneys have a long tube-like mouth with a sticky tongue and they are also covered in spines. Superficially, they resemble the ant eater of South America. Another spiny mammals such as hedgehogs and porcupines. They are also usually black or brown in color. There have been several reports of albino echidneas. Their eyes pink and their spines white. Like the platypus, they are equipped with spectro sensors, but like mentioned before, while the platypus has 40,000 electroreceptors on its bill. The long beak echidnia has only 2,000 electroreceptors. And the short billed echidnia, which lives in a drier environment, has no more than 400 located at the tip of its snout. They have a very short tongue limbs with large claws and are powerful diggers. The echidnia has a way of protecting itself with its long, sharp claws, which they quickly dig a hole until only their spines are showing. Or if exposed, they will crawl into a ball. The predator will not be able to get to it without injuring itself. When there is a fire, the echidnia will dig down out of reach of the fire. The short beak echidnia's diet consists of largely of ants and termites. On the Eastern long beak echidnia eats worms and insect larvae. The tongue of the eastern long beak echidnias have sharp, tiny spines that help them capture their prey. They have no teeth and break down their food by grinding it between the bottoms of their mouth and their tongues. Echidnias do not tolerate extreme temperatures, they use caves and up crevices to shelter from harsh weather conditions. Kidneys are found in forests and woodlands hiding under vegetation, roots, or piles of debris. Sometimes they use the burrows of animals such as rabbits and wombats. A kidney can feel vibrations through their noses. Individual echidnias have large, mutually overlapping territories. Echidnias are capable swimmers. When swimming, they expose their snout and some of their spines. They are known to journey to water in order to groom and bathe themselves. Like the closely related platypus, echidnias have spurs on their hind legs. Unlike the platypus, echidnias spurs are not venomous. All eastern long beak echidnias start with spurs on their hind legs and spur cheese that coat them. Females typically lose their spurs later in life, while males keep them. Both male and female echidnias have a pouch on their belly. Female a single soft shell leathery egg and deposits it directly into her pouch. An egg weighs 380 milligrams. Some source says 1.5 to 2 grams, and it is about 1.4 centimeters long. The mother kidney will transfer the egg to her pouch until it hatches. While hatching, the baby kidney opens the leather shell with a reptile-like egg tooth. Hatching takes place after 10 days of gestation. The young echidnia, called puggle, born larval and fetus-like, then sucks on the milk from the pores of two milk patches and remains in the patch for 45 to 55 days, at which time it starts to develop spines. Puggles will stay within their mother's den for up to a year before leaving, although they 
have a way to protect themselves, Kenya still face many dangers. Some predators include feral cats, foxes, domestic dogs, and goannas. Snakes pose a large threat to the Kenya species because they slither into the burrows and prey on the young spineless puggles. Some precautions that can be taken include keeping the environment clean by picking up litter and causing less pollution, planting vegetation for echidnias to use as shelter, supervising pets, supporting heart echidnias, or leaving them unstirred nearly. Driving them may cause stress, and picking them up improperly may even result in injury. The western lung beak echidnia is listed as a critically endangered by the I. UCN. Numbers have decreased due to human activities, including habitat loss and hunting. The long beak echidnia is considered a delicacy, and although commercial hunting of the species has been banned by the Indonesian and Papua New Guinea government, traditional hunting is permitted. Conservation efforts are being made to preserve the few existing species of this most bizarre group of mammals. Currently, the three species of long beaked kidnos, which are only found in New Guinea, are all critically endangered. The short beaked kidna is common throughout most of temperature Australia and lowland New Guinea. It is now listed as endangered. The population of echidnas in New Guinea is declining because of forest clearing and overhunting, and the animal is much in need of protection. Wildlifters generally suffer from few diseases in the wild. However, the public concern in Tasmania is widespread about the potential impacts of a disease caused by the fungus Amphibiorium. The IUCN lists the platypus on its red list as near threatened. More recently, in January 2020, researchers from the University of New South Wales presented evidence that the platypus is at risk of extinction due to a combination of water resource development, land clearing, climate change, and increasingly severe periods of drought. The platypus is kept for conservation purposes in special aquariums at the following Australian wildlife sanctuaries, such as the David Foley Wildlife Park in Gold Coast, Queensland, and the San Diego Zoo Safari Park in Escondido, California. Three attempts were made to bring the animals to the Bronx Zoo in 1922, 1947, and 1958. Of these, only two of the three animals introduced in 1947 lived longer than 18 months. By better understanding, these animal researchers discover not only how to best ensure their survival for future generations to appreciate for can also learn more about our own ancient evolutionary history through both our similarities and differences with the monotremes. Thanks for watching this Adventurous Kids episode! And what did you learn today? Adventurous Kids! Adventurous Kids! What was the most interesting fact? Adventurous Kids! Adventurous kids! Adventure. Adventure.